Okay. Are you here to give us a highway update, Toby? I can, yeah, if you'd like. Okay. Uh, so the deadline for Better Roads grants was last Friday, so I applied for a couple of uh, grants for the town. Okay. Um, <clears throat> actually, the if you remember the stormwater issues, the, actually the ditches on Marshfield Road. Mm -hmm. So I applied for uh, um, two grants, one for the ditches and one for the gully erosion. So it's bank erosion, which is a category C, and the ditches are category B. Um, so I've applied for those two. Uh, we won't know until mm -hmm. I'm not sure when they I'm not sure when they um, award them. Yeah. But the deadline to to apply was. Both Marshall Road, both yeah. ditches. Road. Yeah, there was um, there was a, there's really severe gully erosion mm -hmm. at the culverts. I even we, know what that means now. Yeah. So Alfie and I looked at it last last week, and then so I, um, because there's a twenty thousand um, dollar maximum on the ditch work, mm -hmm. so I had to separate it into two two sections: one for the ditching and one for the gully stabilization. Okay. Um, this so is, the oh, this is the paved portion. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's that whole. It's yeah, that whole number, It's that whole number two project for the stormwater. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. probably because it's hydrogen, hydrogeologically connected, that makes a. Yep. A difference, right? Well, the the better roads is for erosion and stormwater. I mean, erosion and. Um, Stream water quality and right. the storm water is just piggybacking that. So essentially that was why I chose those two to apply for. Okay. So just those, just these two? Right. There will be in the spring there'll be a structures grant and a class two highway grant. They come, they come up. And as we've done in the past, the, the twenty percent town match usually just comes out of the the Labor. The, the regular Highway budget, so it, it's not a special line item. Okay, now the better roads grants, what's our share? 20%. 20%. Okay. And then that would be the ones that come out of the line item, or is that the income? Well, it's not a line item. So essentially, machinery, time, and manpower is part <coughs> of the project. So in kind. So in kind, it's 20% in kind. And that Essentially, that just that number comes out of their, our normal operating budget. Right. It's not a special additional charge. Right. It doesn't need a, it doesn't need a, a special line. Okay. So you just are looking for us to sign this? No, I've already I had to, already I had to okay. submit it. I'm just this is a copy for your information. Tell okay. me, you said the ditches was twenty thousand. What was? The no, the ditches the ditching project was about eighteen thousand, and the Bank stabilization was about twenty-one thousand. So what? Was There's the a limit on the on the ditching, so yeah. I couldn't include the I couldn't include the stabilization as, as part, part of the thing. ditching because it would have been over the, the grant limit. So you, you're asking for two different grants for the same project. Well, yes, correct. And so my question was: so I assume that you you asked for twenty because that's the limit on the ditching one. No, because if if I included the stabilization of the ditches, I mean the the banks where the ditches, um, the culverts across culverts, outlet, um, it would have been over twenty thousand altogether. So I had to do it in two different grants. And the, and so the piece that you actually did request from that grant was less than twenty thousand. Correct. That's the eighteen. The eighteen was right. It was under the limit for. It's a category B, which is just ditching. Or culvert replacement, and then the other and then one. the other one is category C, and that limit is forty thousand, and I think I put in for twenty one thousand. And that's so for that the, work. And that's for the culverts. That's for the sta stabilization, okay. the double stabilization. So this is on the And again, it's just an application, so we don't know if we got, you know, we have not received them, so there's no commitment at all. At right. Until they approve them. When are we talking about? I'm not sure what the time frame is. This is much earlier. It used to be like in February. They would yeah, this seems early. 
It is early, that's why I didn't have time to prepare you guys anything in advance. Oh, I'm came in late, sorry. Um, so the categories are, are based upon, I, I see the, the dollar amounts, but it's based on the type of project or type of work. Right, so there's, there's four different um, categories for better roads grants. Category A is like an inventory grant. Category B is ditching and culvert replacement. Okay. Category C is bank stabilization. And category D is um, if the world's falling apart, apply here. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a, it's, that's actually for large culverts. The, the category D is for culverts over, I think, eight feet. Thank you. Um, the other thing is, uh, Alfie has been talking to the guy who's going to buy the truck, and so I think that deal is done. So we're going to get rid of that truck for How much? forty-five thousand. So it will not come back. Hmm. We'll have a contract by when, do we think, on that? Uh, he just wants a title and an invoice and should be a done deal as soon as we get that to him. You'll do that? Mm -hmm. Holy mackerel, that's really good news. <laughs> that is good news. We're really happy to hear that. There's more chairs here. Oh, there are. Yeah, more folding chairs. That is good news. Thank you guys for doing that. Yep. Um, and I guess, do you guys want to talk at all about the budget, or are you going to do that later? The other issue? We're actually going to do it later on down the, down the road here. Okay. So we're going to do Cemetery, Woodbury, and HPC first. Okay. Um, I think that's it on anything I can update you on Highway. Okay. I mean, in Highway, you guys, Alfred and you worked on it together. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, shall we get started? Cemetery Commission and John Samanskis is in the hospital, so he won't be able to join us. So he hopes he called here out. just a few minutes ago oh, to okay. tell us. All right. All right. So he hopes, he hopes to be getting out tomorrow. Okay. You seemed fine last Tuesday. So yeah. Well, this was over the weekend. Okay, so, I mean, really the cemetery budget is your budget, um, but I just wanted to give you an opportunity to meet with the, the board, you know, tell us anything that you're thinking of, I don't know. Yeah, we sent out, do you have a copy of that? We yeah, it's out, in the folder. Yeah, yeah, the, um, just a quick little report we typed up from our meeting last week, um, um, not the budget stuff. Um, I, the only thing I have is what the expense sheet. Right. John, you that John is. Hmm. That's all we have is this, mm -hmm. and then the okay. two sheets that Sandra had from there. Okay, that's just like a, okay. Then like, well, I can just I can get copies of this or something. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. This is just like a little. How many copies do I need? Um, five, please. Six. Six. One for Katie. Yeah, Katie needs one. Sorry. Invisible Katie. I know she's there. I can't see her. And then um, I had volunteered to be the commissioner member that does the administrative stuff. We're taking that part off. So right. the person who does, right. handles the burials and the, um, she has one. We have one. Oh, <laughs> I need one, so do you also? Oh, yeah, you yeah. need one. Um, so yeah, that's the biggest part is we finally <laughs> got ourselves organized to put the job out to bid Excellent. and break it down to mowing and maintenance. And then 
on top of that, obviously, there'll still be the special projects like the headstone cleaning, putting in fences, those sort mm -hmm. of things, and then the administrative tasks. We only have very few burials a year, so it's not a large amount to take on that part. Okay. Um, and you, you said so you're going to take that on. So yeah. Thank you very much yep. for doing that. It's, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> Um, That's what she says so now, right? I know. So I need to like get up to speed on some of the stuff because it's so much of that stuff was handled by Wyatt mm -hmm. that I don't actually even know some of the process. So some of that needs to get. Me Do you have all of the records from him? Yeah. So he's been jump dropping off a lot of them, I guess here. Mm -hmm. um, but that is still a, a project of getting the maps. I guess a lot of things are just even from before Wyatt's time, just like written on random pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have um, that new software that we're gonna try to start data entering all of the data. Wow. Yeah. It's a big project. We did have this, um, uh, Laura Daly came to our cemetery commission meeting last week and she is the assistant town clerk for Woodbury and has been doing all this data entry for their cemeteries and she's so interested in it she came to our meeting to see if she could do some for Callis because she lives in Callis. Oh nice. It's wonderful. It's super awesome. Yeah so she has like, volunteer yeah time. and she's also going to school for accounting so she was like helping Fletcher with the with like the budget sheet so we were like oh you're like our missing link. So she yeah. came in, yeah, mm -hmm. so she's going to help Juanita and Fletcher mm -hmm. come in whenever they can to do some of that data entry. I'm going to do the handling. I'm like the, what do they call me? I have a name for myself. I'm like the customer service representative now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cemetery so customer yes, service. they will call me. Um, Probably and then, quiet. Yeah, and then we'll, um, and then this, whoever, I mean, it could be Wyatt, whoever mm -hmm. submits the bid. Um, to do the maintenance, we'll do the maintenance and the mower. Right, I think that's a good move on your part because yeah. that way you don't have to worry about all the workers' comp and insurance because they're supposed to have all of that. Right, yep, right. right. I know when we flipped, now we're flipping all back the other right. direction, but I think it is a lot easier. And, um, I think it'll be a lot easier for you guys. Yeah, yep, yeah. And we won't have $5 for the yeah, it was the equipment hire $10 stuff. for the weed whacker. And it was something that was always really hard for our commission because we really wanted to explain <coughs> the dollar right. that is being spent to the people of Callis, and it was really hard for us to understand it. So we're like, how can we explain this to people? We have a hard time understanding it. What, what are the proposals due? Uh, no, uh, November 5th. November 5th, they're supposed to come in. Oh, just the day, before, guess, the day before election day. Yes. And then. Um, I guess we're gonna decide on our November fourteenth meeting. And it looks like this report here you could use to put in the town report. Yeah, that's what I told Fletcher to say. Yeah. Just as if you already did it. <laughs> right. Um, and who's who's up this year for commissioners? I don't think anybody. Okay. I, I recently I think it's two thousand twenty until somebody switches over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean you guys are doing a really amazing job with. Trying to get everything computerized yeah, we, and yeah. maps and deeds. It's really, a, it's a lot of work. It's we, a lot of work. we, New Fairboot is the last cemetery that hasn't had all this uh, headstones cleaned. Mm -hmm. And that's been the last couple of years we've been going through every single cemetery. Um, so that next year will be awesome to say like that we did them all. It's been a long time coming. And then of course we'll have to probably start all over again. But um, the, a lot of those have been neglected for many, many years. What do you think? So. Anticipate the cycle is going to be in terms of cleaning. That's what we don't know because we have no, we have no like, it was never really done before. Yeah. So of these okay. hundred, these some of these graves are obviously over a hundred years old, so we don't want a hundred years to go by. Right. Right. Um, we want to probably set up something like we do with the hedge trimming, where we devote a certain amount of time every year to a certain mm -hmm. section of the cemetery so then it's not such a huge cost. Uh, it's yeah, just like, yeah, okay, right. this section this year, this section, and then just start over again every 10 years or something. And um, just just so you know, at the last meeting, the board agreed to put a warned item on the, an article on the on the warning for a poplar for $1,500 so you, nobody yeah. has to go out and get signatures yeah. and. Oh, okay, great. That'll be good. Um, and I let Andy know. Okay. And then John went to the site visit. Yeah. Yeah, they said that was great. They the day we had our meeting even better. Yeah. Yeah. I was um, so I don't know. I I've given it more thought. I think it's a repair or a fix to prevent uh, further erosion or expansion of the eroded areas. Doable. Yeah. Um, it would be great if we could get both towns to join in on the. Yeah. That effort. was something else that Laura Daly took on. Is she was like. 
calling local engineers and contractors to see if they had any expertise. Yeah, maybe so. get some another volunteer. Yeah. Yeah. Callis is great at getting volunteers. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I had heard this is hearsay. One of the folks that were that was in attendance last week at the Poplar Poplar yeah. Poplar Hill Cemetery um, said that that. Somebody had spoken, or maybe at a select board meeting, Seth Gardner had expressed kind of a reluctance toward uh, the town contributing to the maintenance of the cemetery. And I don't. And, and what was said further was that they, you know it's, it's in Cal's. Why would we own it or something? Yeah. And I was thinking if maybe if it was viewed differently as as a nonprofit, somehow the nonprofit was right. maintained. And, but the, there was an annual contribution from both towns of some set amount, and right. um, and maybe the the board of the nonprofit could be staffed with representatives from each town. Yeah, and he did say that, and I think the way he explained what Seth, how Seth acted was, I think Seth didn't want to say anything that he couldn't say until he was in a select board meeting. Oh, okay. So it was like I don't want to oh. talk about that until oh, I can make like the decision. That's right. That's because we kind of like tried to pull that out. We're like, was he absolutely no? Yeah. And, I think it was more like, so I was like, I don't know, I don't want to talk about it until yeah. whatever their meeting December is or something. Yeah. December, December 15th, something yeah. like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. there are multiple, you know, kind of pathways toward re resolving all the issues there. And yeah. One, one is, you know, well, well, town, towns owning it or or it maintains itself as a nonprofit or maybe and no one knows about it like putting it out there into the universe like, there's a lot of people that well, I, think I wonder if you could get Laura Daly to step yeah, up and that's be like, on that board I think she's, yeah she's talking to them I think that is going to happen bring some you know fresh life to yep. the party yep. I was yeah, thinking exactly. also if you reached out to the Kate family um, in East Montpelier I, I know their dad yep. Wes is buried there yep. so it appears yeah um, and so they might have an interest in East Montpelier being yeah. stepping up. So yeah, and then we got to walk through the mm. cemetery and get some last names. Yeah, right. <laughs> a lot of East Montpelier people. There are a lot of East Montpelier people. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so as far as your budget for the town report, you're not looking for any changes. I don't think so. I am not the budget person. I thought John sent you something. I think I think we yeah we yeah, are not because we don't know. Yeah, I can't say yes or no. I don't know. I think it would just be the same if not. Because we have to kind of see now, like, how the bids come in, right? Right. So, is that the thing that was an email form? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, that's yeah. That's the thing Sandra made. Yeah. Yeah. Sandra. OK, so that's good to know. That yeah. It's going to stay the same. Yeah. And I think it'll be easier since we've done such a huge amount of special projects if the budget becomes more of a maintenance budget and then there'll be like we'll be able to be more specific about the special projects and there'll be probably smaller dollar amounts than what we mm -hmm. have been doing if that makes sense okay yeah good great yeah yeah so for next year we're going to finish all the head the headstone cleaning we're going to do some more. We have some decision making about the Old West Church fence. Mm -hmm. um, Old West ones. Church and Robinson. And Robinson, yep. Whether and to then, keep the wood fence or yeah, whether to go granite. Yep. yep. And I, yeah. I think we're going to need, we should reach out to the Old West Church Association. Mm -hmm. so and if the horses has, next door. Yes, yeah, so if anyone has strong opinions right. about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Somebody will. Yeah. And, um, and then maybe get a fence up around the new Hudson Cemetery. Great. Thank you for everything you guys do. Yeah. Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you. Any further, any additional questions from the board or Alfred? I got one. Yeah. Yeah. Just, a, just a comment just to make sure everybody knows uh, why it's been bringing some of the leftover materials to the town garage for storage. There's a bunch of the wood boards. Oh, okay. There was a bunch of painting supplies. A box of flags. Okay. Sometimes John stores just, that stuff too. Okay. So. Well, just yeah, I just want everybody to know if they yeah. want it or need it. I've yeah. got it. Um, okay. I can find a place to hide it, but. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I just didn't know if Wyatt made that clear to everybody. I don't know. He, no, no. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah, he. I knew yeah. he had some stuff somewhere. Okay. <coughs> that's good. Thank okay. Well, thank you for taking finding it at home. Well, it's, it's all town property, one way or the other, so you know, as long as we can store it, we can keep it from being yep. destroyed. Yep, you're right, it is. 
And what did you say you had a flag? There was flag. a box of flags. Okay, yeah. that's one of the missing links. Okay, that's okay. good to know. Yeah. You're welcome to <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Probably not right now. I want the elementary right. school kids to do all the flags. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Anything Thank else? You. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Next up is Fire Department. I'm Dennis. Winter Fire Department. Okay. Has anybody been following our Facebook page at all? I didn't know you had one. Ah. Yeah, get on there. We do have one. Ah. Actually, if you guys go on there, you'll see uh, the new pickup that we just purchased. We actually just took delivery of it Tuesday. <laughs> Um, which was the vehicle that we had added into the truck fund last year mm -hmm. to replace our old rescue. Okay, so first, before we get started, does everybody know everybody? No. Okay, so why don't we go around the room? Denise I'm Wheeler. Sharon Wynn. John Brabant. Hey, John. I'm Chance. Hey, yeah. I'm Paul. Zerudi. I'm Katie. I take a minute. Let's see. Rose Pelcha. Cliff Emmons. I'm not at the table, but I'm Timothy Neal. Oh, there you are. Yeah, no. So, go right ahead. All right. So, uh, I sent you an email in regards to the budget. I, I did mention, I'm not sure if everybody's aware, I wasn't really prepared to discuss budget tonight because we haven't actually voted on our budget. Um, you know, we are looking somewhere between 2 and 2.5%. Two and rate of inflation is somewhere is estimated between 2.5 and 3 percent by the end of the year so we're trying to stay a little under mm -hmm. um, last year I think we were spot on at 2.1 I think it was or 2.2 um, so we are trying to stay a little bit under this year because we know we have some bigger items coming up mm -hmm. like the capital replacement funds um, we can dig right into that or we can also discuss the the station that we were looking at we got in the off season we went out and got a donation from the bank, they donated us a piece of property. Where is that? Uh, right across the street from the fire station, the Blue House. Is that the one that was being torn down? No, it's no, next to the It's right next to that. Aronson's old house. Aronson's old house. Oh, Aronson's house. Yep. The bank donated it. The bank donated that to us. No uh, banks did that. Yeah, well, they were they were really was looking at taking a loss. On, it? it was foreclosed on. It was ah. looking at going for auction sale. They were looking at taking a pretty good chunk on that ah. one. So what bank was that? North. Uh, no, it was the uh, Vermont Credit State Employees State Credit, Credit Union. Union. And uh, so they, wow. they got to write it off to a nonprofit uh, wow. for 96000 or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. That's so, wonderful. That's great. Yeah, so it's a great opportunity for us. Her, uh, commission, All of her commission. All of her commission fees. Grand, so she donated those. Deal. Wow, there's some good years. folks out there. There really are. Wow. You know, so we, we've kind of moved forward with some of the work we've done. We've got a gentleman who's on the department that owns an excavator. He's come over, done some uh, site work, you know, digging. Mm -hmm. um, so and he's donating that time as well? Yeah, yes, yeah. And uh, nice. we've, we've had uh, two or three three sessions now where we've gone over and done work. So we're, we're trying to keep a rough estimate on that as well as far as in-kind donations and big donations. Mm -hmm. um, and we're up over a little bit over 100000 now that we've, you know, raised in donations, so to speak, um, on this. But the one thing we are looking for in that aspect is at some point here we are going to start moving forward and we'd like to form a committee and we'd like to ask one member from the Cal Select Board and mm -hmm. one member from the Woodbury Select Board to take part in that okay. uh, so that there's fair representation. It's right. not happening right this minute, so you guys have time to think about it. Okay. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a heads up that we would be looking for somebody uh, to come forward yeah. if anybody was interested in that. Yeah, and we obviously um, would definitely be interested. So I would assume as much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the big elephant is the capital replacement fund. Um, yeah, and this is new for you guys. This is new for us. It's something Paul and I started talking about shortly after I took over as president because we've never had a capital replacement fund. Mm -hmm. um, so we wait until a truck breaks down and then we try to figure out how we're going to. So you're president. It. You're president now, and not Paul. Oh, uh, Stephen. Remember Stephen Morse? He was yeah. the president. Paul's always oh. been the chief. I'm He's still never been fire president. chief. <laughs> we're trying oh, to get okay. duties separated properly because I was doing too much before. Right. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Fry right. Hoffner's not in the fire department. No, he no. retired from He's everything. Been He's yeah. around, but I don't see him much. Last I heard, he was on a, literally on a slow boat to China. He, he, he was. He just <laughs> he made was. it back because Steve and I are on the uh, Hazen yes, school board Lord. together. Oh. And he just got back. And, yeah, I was talking to him because it was supposed to be a three-month trip, and then something happened, and they got diverted. And it turned out to be a world 
one cruise for him. Uh, it took like wow. five months. Yeah. Get to Steve. <laughs> so yeah, he uh, he's definitely not <laughs> involved okay. with the fire department anymore. Okay. But um, yeah, this is something we've never done. Uh, years and years and years ago, they had a capital replacement fund. It was like three thousand dollars a year or something, mm -hmm. way back in the sixties or seventies. Um, so it is it is a new concept for us, but it's it's a needed concept. I think uh, even somebody I can't remember if it was Denise or somebody mentioned it last year that they noticed we didn't have one. Mm -hmm. um, it really is the way most fire departments are funding themselves as far as replacements. Most towns are funding themselves for their equipment replacements, their truck replacements. Um, so we basically took a, a spreadsheet that I did. Oh, you get a copy? Yeah, yeah, okay. Be, yeah, oh, perfect. So I, clear you. so I can actually see it now. That's yeah, great. There you go. Um, <laughs> Without my glasses. <laughs> right? So we listed out all of our trucks, what we have, and you'll see that there's two trucks up there. One says rescue old, one says rescue new. I literally was creating this the day they delivered the truck, so I added both of them in because the, the pickup trucks are supposed to be replaced every 10 years so that you can still get some resale value on them mm -hmm. and they're still functioning properly. Um, so that's why it's in there twice, is to represent the cost of both trucks that would be replaced over a 20-year period. So you're just keeping to, the Just to keep one? it simple. No, we're not. Oh, okay. No, we're not. But the cost to replace the next one would be in 10 years. And this is Rescue 2? Rescue 2, yeah. yeah. And is this the one you just put on your Facebook page? Yes, yeah. Okay. We've, we've got the old one we're driving right now because we're waiting. We got the truck, but we haven't gotten the lights and sirens on it yet, and so it doesn't really look like a fire truck yet. Um, we're working on it, but there are pictures of it, um, and we're pretty excited. It's it's a nice truck, and uh, yeah. it starts on the first try yes. instead of you know the fourth or fifth. So yeah, that's kind of what you need when you're going to yeah, a fire, it's right? Kind of, kind of important. Yeah. You know? um, so basically, we have the the trucks here. The last item we got is that miscellaneous equipment, which is our big one, which is the SCBA cost, and that you, you should be replacing every fifteen to twenty years. We're starting to get to that point where. Every time a pack breaks now, we're looking at a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks. Wow. It's it's getting to the point where it's getting really mm -hmm. expensive to maintain the packs. We're required to replace the tanks next year, the cylinders. Yeah, now can't you can you get a grant for that? Uh, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Depends on what's going on and I who's think doing it. I think East Pillar got a grant for for theirs. Did that, right, yeah. Toby? No. 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 Did you no. apply for one and didn't get yeah. it? Or? Yeah. That's yeah. the usual story. You apply and don't get. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We all like to apply for all these fun. things. Um, we we stopped like, applying because I think we were 0 for 10. Yeah, we were 0 for 6 or 8 the last time, so we kind of stopped too because it's a tremendous yeah. amount yeah, of paperwork. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a grant writer for the state of Vermont, and the grants I write are nothing compared to these fire act grants. They're these awful. fire act grants awful. are horrible. Yeah. They're encumbersome, and for volunteer departments that don't have right. somebody paid to sit around and just deal with that, you really need a grant writer for stuff like that. Cause, right, uh, and then there's strings attached too. And there's a lot yeah, of executing it to the next yeah. disaster. We we yeah. the last federal grant we got would have been in 2004 when we bought this equipment. It was a little bit easier to manage, but it was still tough. Mm -hmm. But we finally, like you, gave up after seven or eight, ten years of getting nothing. And it's because there anywhere. just aren't enough funds to go the around. Funds the funds shrink up and the demand grows. After 9 yeah. 11, there was a lot of funds yeah. available for a lot of things. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and they keep pulling pull, pull, pull <coughs> But it's kind of dwindled out. So now it's it's really tough. It's competitive. Um, you almost have to be a, a department that has no equipment at all, mm -hmm. and you're trying to start up. Or a department that has a lot of equipment but knows how to get a grant writer to yeah. Or has a professional grant writer. Yeah. What is SCBA? SCBA is self-contained breathing apparatus. Oh, breathing right. Operators. You had that in the email. Got yep. it. Yep. Yep. So it protects us for all the different respiratory right. hazards right. we have in yep. the face. So that's, that's the reason why that's in there because it is pretty costly and it's pretty important as well. So I added that in there um, so that we can get a general cost. Now the, the total replacement cost was just under 1.6 over 20 million, uh, over 20 million, over 20 years. Um, averaged out, it was 79.5, which is where I came up with that basic number of 80,000. Now, that being said, one of the things I also wrote in the email is that we have been talking and considering ourselves as well about reducing the size of our fleet. For instance, the engine one that we're looking at replacing is 20, uh, where am I, 21 years old. And our rescue one is 20 years old. Those are both due for replacement, and that's what we were thinking about combining together to make one truck, which would be a, a rescue pumper. 
figuring in the cost of a rescue pumper versus the two trucks being replaced drops that down another ten thousand dollars a year so automatically it's gone from 80 to 70 mm -hmm. if we do combine that truck together mm -hmm. like we'd like to do. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously, you know, as we move further down the road, there may be additional uh, accommodations we can make to try to reduce our fleet a little more. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a, a, a decent sized fleet, but it's very old fleet. Mm -hmm. um, so that was why we wanted to come to you guys early, was to try to hammer out some details around a capital replacement fund and <coughs> see where the and are you back to the building? <clears throat> do you anticipate asking the towns for money for the station? At some point, I would anticipate yes. Um, we were originally looking at uh, over a million back when they did the the study. Paul could probably discuss that better. He was actually involved in the mm -hmm. the station. Round when they looked one. at the round one. Yeah, it was of two the point something million. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. It was more than we wanted to really do. Um, now we're looking down in the probably one to one three, give or take, yeah. depending on what has to be added and what can be taken away, you know. And obviously the the donation of the land really helped push it a little further. Uh, we were looking at because our fundraising goal has always been for us like somewhere in the two to two hundred fifty thousand that we would do and funds raised and uh, labor in kind. Mm -hmm. That was kind of our goal for ourselves. We're part way there you know, so already. Yeah. We are working our way towards that, but that um, donated house has a drilled well on it, right in the front yard. It does. We're working on getting it tested, and we're actually is that going to be okay? That location, if you put a firehouse there, it's probably not the great, most ideal location. But through the town study that we did, it was pretty evident that the folks want us to stay there in the village. Yeah. Yeah, and, I remember that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I don't want to fight that battle, and. Uh, we already did. Well, that. Why don't we also can utilize that well? I think it's well, that's right the, that's the plan. If it, we're sending a water test in. If it, passes. but it won't be in the way of your trucks getting in and out. How well, it could be in the, the floor, so. just through an access oh, lid. Oh, so, oh, right. Yeah. 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 So oh, yes, it great. would probably be in the building, but it's okay mm -hmm. to do that. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we, it, we just got all the water tests in, so we can test it for E. coli and coliform and all the mm -hmm. different additives because of the. We other property the gas next station door, next door, so they got to test it to make sure there's right. no yeah. pollution in there. Right, right, right. in the groundwater. There. Yeah. yeah. And and what's the scoop with that store? Is that going to become part? We of started this digging out this oh, dirty yeah, soil today. Yeah, yeah that's got yeah. nothing to do with us. Oh, okay. You're we would be attached to it, so that would be permanent green space, so we'd have access to the space. Oh, that's they're gonna my be understanding. Is once it FEMA does it as a mitigation, it has to be returned to its most natural state, and it can only be gravel or green space. Can't build there. Green space would be nice. Yeah, I think it'll look nice. Yeah, it's an eyesore now. Yeah. Who owns that? The town owns it. Now? Well, it's still owned by private people, yes. but the town has a purchase. Again, going by what I've been reading, the town has a purchase and sale agreement pending a whole bunch of level studies mm -hmm. and different things mm -hmm. that I don't understand. Liability stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm assuming you're going to come to us with a request and give us an update on call volume and like you usually do with yeah, I'll have calls. Oh yes, yes. We, 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 yeah, we were not trying to uh, subvert our normal meeting with you guys. We just right. wanted to come in and discuss this a little bit earlier. I knew there was a little bit of sticker shock, like I said in the right. email. Yeah. Um, so I figured being upfront, transparent, get it right out to you guys, and then you know after we get our budget really moving with the department has mm -hmm. been approved. We'll come back to you guys with the budget, uh, you know, the actual budget itself. So when do you think you might be wanting to come back? When do you think you'll have your stuff ready so I can make sure I don't forget to? Well, no, can, we, can, next can, week can we vote on it? Approval. We, can, we can vote on it this coming well, week, right? Well, so we dropped the budget. So what our bylaw says, the budget's given to the members in November. We vote on it the December meeting, which will be the first Tuesday in December. So any time after that, we can But does any discussions it. around the capital fund we could have, because obviously mm -hmm. we got to get your feelings on it. And, um, okay, because we, we do East Montpelier on December 10th. That's, those are my, we meet on Mondays, so. Oh, yeah, I'll just go back. I sent an this. email to the East Montpelier folks and now So it's the 6th would be, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's November. Yeah. The 4th would be our budget meeting, meeting where the budget would be approved. Okay. So we, we could come in on the 10th as well if that's Well, I, I sent an email to the East Montpelier Fire Department folks asking them about the 10th and never heard back. We'll take so, it if you want to take it. I don't know if they're available to come on the 10th or not. 
Uh -huh. you, you can get back to us if you want. Okay. We're pretty flexible I'll put it down on that. The, I'll put it down with the question mark and see. I mean, yeah. we, don't, we don't spend the whole meeting right. doing it, but... Well, I hope not. So I, I appreciate you guys responding to my emails. Yeah. It makes my life a little bit easier to plan agendas when people respond. Okay. I had a question. Um, um, on the bottom line on the capital plan, Total replacement cost averaged over 20 years. You're saying about 80,000. Is there a percentage that you're kind of expecting that would come from Callis and a percentage that would come from Woodbury? That would be a 50 50 split. That's what we've always done in the past. So, yes. And I'm so, it'd be $40,000 yeah, $40, a year. It's not $80,000 from Callis, no. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that. But 40000 is a significant. Amount. It's a significant amount, you know, without a doubt, and that's why I wanted to get it out early. Um, you know, it's definitely, um, I think we figured it out, it was about two cents on our tax bill, you know, for most of the folks that uh, own houses on the department, myself included, we were looking anywhere from 20 to $35 extra a year on our taxes for something like this. So mm -hmm. it is a significant amount. Um, however, we got to start somewhere. It should have started 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. but. You know, we can't do nothing about that. You guys right. can't, we can't, so we got to move forward. We saved all that money, right? Yeah, right. Now it's time to yeah, I mean, get a piper. So this is 40000 for capital expenditures. Not including. Not including not the including regular budget. Not including the regular budget. budget. Now, the nice thing is that we do have the 17850 which is what both towns pay. They each pay 17850 for the truck replacement funds. And that money's already spoken for for the next six years. However, when those loans run out, we mm -hmm. wouldn't need loans anymore. So that money would actually come back to the town. It would, they'd stop paying that 17850 once those loads were right. done. Right. But just assume you're a Callis or Woodbury taxpayer, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden there's this... Have you thought about doing this a little more gradually instead of all at once? The problem is, is uh, we've got two trucks that are due to be replaced, which means we need to do something. Mm -hmm. We either need six hundred thousand dollars to replace the two trucks now, or we need to start doing this and loan one truck, reduce our fleet, like I was saying. So there, there are options. However, none of them are great options, mm -hmm. and gradually building into this should have started like ten years ago. Right. Um, so we're kind of behind the eight ball on this, yeah. or else we have to start borrowing money again and paying more finance charges, and we're still going to need that money mm -hmm. from the towns to pay the loans. So you're going to sell this rescue to old? Yep. And you think you're going to get 5000 for it? Yeah, we are getting yeah, 5000 yeah. It's already sold. Oh, it already is sold. Yeah, oh, okay. we just haven't. So I assume that will go in this capital well, fund? Actually, that was part of the estimate of the cost of that truck when we came to the towns. That's why we only needed 7000 a year for the six years was because okay. we knew we were going to be selling this for five grand already, and we did a fundraiser of another almost ten, ten, ten thousand dollars to help pay for lights and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me again, the seventeen thousand eight fifty—that's what we currently pay now. Correct. For towards truck, cap, truck, truck replacement loans. fund. Yep. And then we pay the regular operating expenses. The thirty. So we pay the seventeen eight fifty for how much longer? Six years. So are you going to ask for forty thousand before six years from now? Yeah. So we're going to be. You're going to ask us for fifty seven eight fifty. Total of fifty seven. Yep. Holy macaroni! Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. That's it's, a lot plus the operating expenses. It, it is. It is. It's and, a lot of money. And we already spend a significant amount on, you know, East Montpelier. I know that's not your, yep, your issue, but it's going to put our um, fire department combined budget up from one eighty one to two fifty. What for a small town? You know, we only have 1,600 residents. It would be 220, actually. Yeah, 220. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we already got 220. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Everything else is already included. It's just the 40 that yeah. would be an addition to the 181. So, not that I don't value I understand. both I understand. fire departments and all that, but we have to look at mm -hmm. yep. the, the tax piece of it because not only this, but not to get into the 
Act 46 stuff too much, but our school taxes are probably going to take a huge jump because of Act 46. The so merger thing. the merger yeah. thing, and no, that's going to be hard. Your school, right there. Are they? I hadn't even read that yet. Right. First, there. It's not position. a. It's not a good. It's not a good thing. So I mean, our taxes are going to go up. I forget what it was. How many cents? Seventeen cents on the hundred. The assignment of two point five million dollars in debt from other schools to our our school. Our town. So that's a lot. That's going to be a lot for our taxpayers to absorb all in one fell swoop. Oh, I understand. I'm a taxpayer myself. I get it. So just keep that in mind when you're doing. And I know you do. I know yeah. you do. Well, that's it. We're, we're we're picking it apart every place we can, including you know which doesn't show on here because you can't guarantee what you're going to sell all these vehicles. The rescue, we know we got five grand. For. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, assuming we get eighty thousand for engine one, that's hoping we old. get 80,000. Mm -hmm. You know, we may not, we may only get 60, but if we do get 80, that brings down, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. we can make this look a little better for everybody, but we can't assume we're gonna get $80,000 right. for a truck, a 20 year old truck. Well, so we are still looking at things, you know, yeah. if you guys can, you know, suggest something that you think might work, if, if you think we should uh, start with a, a little bit lower amount and try to build up over the next year, you know, that's why we wanted to meet with you guys ahead of time. Right, no, I appreciate that. Um, but I would just ask you to think about this when you know what we're paying total for fire costs. And then we got this other piece to think about. I mean, we don't do the school budget, but we have to think about the, the yep. big picture. So I would just ask you to maybe sharpen your pencils a little bit. I don't want to sound mean because I'm not trying to be. But I know, and that this is probably gets into a little bit sensitive area, point of pride almost. And I know you're separate fire companies, but have you ever talked with, spoken with, met with East Montpelier Fire Company to see if you guys could work out a merger or something? A I don't know if there would be any cost savings. Well, I think that of your departments and sharing I, of equipment. And, I think that they this has been brought up before, I, and they're in two different districts or something. So oh, that's right, right, that's right. Well, not to mention, there's a whole other town in between the two towns. Mm -hmm. Uh, that you're talking about merging, that would be unheard of, and you'd have to pull, build stations in between to well, try to it's, spread it's that. One town's callous. Yeah, I know, but you're talking East Montpelier way over here, Woodbury yeah. over here, and another town in between. Yeah. With no station here uh, to merge. Yeah, I don't know. I was just trying to. Yeah, that would be that would be a tough it. sell. Winging it. You'd probably wind up spending more money on stations than you would on a couple trucks. Yeah, we're just trying to throw some yeah, ideas sure. out there. Can, it's not like it's so that we're all thinking about issue. ways yeah. to make things right. more affordable. Absolutely. Any, you want to say something, Cliff? Yeah. <laughs> What's the rule of thumb? You you said another. We would have to put another build another station. I presume you meant in between. Is there a rule of thumb around access response? Time? Usually, it's about ideally you'd like a firehouse within five miles of everybody's house is ideal. That's um, the insurance company. Yeah, right? ISO. That's what they hit you up with. There's, there have been folks that I've gotten calls on our end of town for that couldn't get insurance, for example, because they're too far from a station. They're getting really fussy about that. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm I mean, dealing we, with a we lot. Pay, of, we pay a higher premium where I live because we're not five miles from yeah, any fire station. I, I get, I'm getting a number of calls at our camps where people have built big homes on these camp roads and fire apparatus can't get there, and they're losing their insurance. You know, I usually get the call first. Well, can you bring a fire truck down? The answer is usually no, unless you fix the road and. Right, and then they don't want to. Then they need Lloyd's of London, because because the gap the gap for getting regular insurance to Lloyd's of London is about six hundred bucks a year compared to twenty eight hundred bucks per year. So that's kind of the difference the fire department makes. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. You know, when I lived in Woodbury and was in the process of moving here, I th I always thought you know, Woodbury was having a hard time getting recruits even back then, and I always thought. It would be good, like if we retire a truck, you know, it's not something you want to rely on in first response all the time. But if we could instead build like a small heated building, you know, as big as this, to keep a truck in callus, just a tanker with a pump on it, so you could get that first thousand gallons of water on the house. So by the time you guys get there, and it would be a way to recruit maybe guys in cows who think, well, I'm not in East Montpelier, I'm not in Woodbury, but hey, we need someone to make sure this little place stays warm and the trucks are maintained. And, and then that person can be a first responder because he's, now he's up the, up the hill. And he could get to the callous fire and get that 
first dump of water on it, and by the time you guys come, you'd be less sweating, right? And it would be a way to, you're giving these trucks, you're dumping these trucks so cheap, you could just dump it in a small heated building in Callis, and I think you might be able to get some recruits. I know I, that would probably incent me to join. I think he's up there already gets recruits from Callis. We haven't been able to get any. No, I'm, sa I'm saying that might incent me to yeah. join. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. incentivize yeah. people if there's a, an outpost in Callis. Yeah, the yeah. toughest thing I found, speaking with my fire chief, is the money's not fun to ask for. It's not fun to get. It's really hard to get members. It's right. is so right. difficult. That's my highest stress point, actually. That's right. yeah. As much as I hate coming to talk about money, the, the, the higher on the list for me is people. Yeah. It's so yeah. hard to get volunteers and to get them trained and to get them, because with the insurance companies now requiring the physicals and all these mm. things we got to do, that right. you know, it's just really challenging. So that's my highest heartburn level, believe it or not, is people. Yeah. The, yeah. Folks, the folks are the most valuable thing that we have, actually. I'll bet you if here was just, for instance, if there was a firehouse in Maple Corner, just a one truck firehouse just for a tanker, you made a tanker with a pumper, pump on it, I bet you'd have people lining up. I wish just in, just in, just Maple Corner people have almost self interest. I'm saying so, on the positive. So on the way. other side of that coin is training. No, I know. We train know. four nights a month. I know. I was on the fire department. And, and yeah. that's what stops people from being participating. It's 200. I'm aware. But it's when it's in training. your face and the building's there, might get some engine sure. company it but if you don't go to the training it doesn't matter where the house or the truck is if you don't come to the training I don't want you in the truck and I don't know I know that to, to, be, to be a member that's that you have to do the training I understand that right. so I'm right. saying it, it might incent people to, to become yeah. active 210 fire hours force. to get certified right. you mm -hmm. know. and there are two trucks in Calus. there are fire trucks in Calus. not not fire trucks in Calus, but they're still not interested for it. there are no fire trucks in Calus. No no okay, Callus East Montpelier Alliance. My bad. Yeah. Now, one positive, I don't know if you guys, last year we had our ISO rating improve from 9 to 8, too. So anyone I don't know what that means. That means you get lower insurance rates, because that's Good. tough for yeah, the, the amount, the amount of training, drills, uh, getting water yeah, flowing. Quality, yeah. Yeah. So that was a positive. That was, we worked really hard over the last three years to right. get, get them to come and re-rate mm -hmm. us, which was a big deal. Scott, you had a question? You ready for a question from the audience? Sure. Um, it's a great chart. And I love that column, that seventh column, replacement cost per year. That is a beautiful illustration of the incremental cost of a new truck, of an additional truck. So like your first line, the 98 truck cost per year, that that's a very good, clear way of explaining it. And that's and you're exactly right that to own a truck, you have to think about what it's going to cost to replace it. So if you had if you eliminated that first truck, that would be nine thousand dollars less off the total replacement cost for Callus. You mean the seventy-five Scott? The total. Look at that first line. Half of seventeen five. Oh, okay. So what you mean? If you eliminate that seventeen fifty, half of that goes back to Woodbury tax, or it is not pulled out of Woodbury taxpayers, and half of it not pulled out of Callis taxpayers. Right. So that's about nine thousand dollars less. That's about a half cent on the tax rate. That's a significant savings. So every time you can eliminate. Right, maybe highway department even. But anyway, for that, that's a beautiful way to put it for the fire department. And you, I know you, you guys said you were thinking of that. There's a huge benefit, obviously, right there. Right. I think we need to. Yeah. Well, and then that's it. The, the rescue pumpers that we're looking at are about 450, so they are a little more expensive than the engine. But still, when you replace the rescue one mm -hmm. at 300,000 and the engine one at 350, that's 650. You're saving 200 thousand dollars by combining that truck right. together. Because to be honest with you, yeah. I think this is going to be really hard to do, really hard to swallow for this much, this amount of money, this, you know, $40,000 more mm -hmm. in a well, year. At least, th at least this year till we figure out what's going on with this merger. Right. I mean, even if you could, might you know. Look better next year. I don't know. I'm just putting right. it out there that I think it's going to be really hard to, to sell and to swallow, even for us. And we know how valuable the services that you all provide are and how essential they are when you need it. You know, so we, we understand that. So, like I said, we're open to suggestions. 
Well, I think the one that you know that Scott just pointed out is a good one. Well, that's what they're doing. That's right, so. that's what I already yeah. said we were doing. Right. I, I wrote that in the email. Right. That drops it back down about another ten thousand dollars a year, which is only about five grand mm -hmm. per town because it is ten thousand overall. Right. But every little bit we, helps. We can keep working on it, and like I said, this was a rough draft, and this mm -hmm. was really about the sticker shock because it is a big number. It is, and it is sticker shock. I um, have to say so. But once we once we I could create another spreadsheet where we drop down those two mm -hmm. trucks into one, you know, and like I said, I, that, that brought it down to what's that? Did the replacement fund at fifty percent of the need, and then the makeup is a town meeting day, you know, like we've always done, and then it's less of a. Right, at least right now, and then down the road, if things look better, if you could. So fifty percent of what we need. Of the forty, yep. if you did the twenty. I'm just suggesting. Is okay, no, that's why I asked for. Some and then it, you know, it's going to come out short next time you need a truck. But then you, you do the makeup at town meeting day uh, at the, the time of truck campaign. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's. A, I mean, that's I mean, at least it's idea. a start to get sure. you to yeah, it, where you want to be start. instead of trying to eat the whole elephant yeah. all at once. Oh, yeah. Kind yeah. Of thing. I'm glad we had this. Yeah. I had a question. The replacement costs, those are new vehicles. Yes. New. Yeah, the, the used vehicles, to be honest with you, oh, you have to buy something that's 10, 15 years old to really save any significant money, which now means you've got a five year truck. Well, and didn't you guys, you guys bought you one nice that one. was already the a new demo. Yeah, a it was demo. a new demo. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So we saved quite a bit of money last right. time. We and saved we a lot of money. We appreciate your yeah, being great. willing to do that. Yeah, yeah. We, we do look around. You yeah. know, and we um, would again, obviously, because we were right. trying to get the best deal for right. the buck. Yeah. We're the ones that got to sit and ask for the money. Right, right. right. exactly. I know, it's not <laughs> fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've still got to have this argument with our with department. We do this on the Woodbury or the town meeting. Oh, yeah, this Have you been to the Woodbury fun. Select Board yet? Not yet. The Woodbury Select Board, no. We just go to them and give them the numbers. We don't actually have a discussion, have a discussion with them like this because it all goes to the town, the taxpayers in Woodbury. Yeah. Uh, they vote on it. We just put oh, it, we right. just warn it. Right. Yeah. Right. So we, we still have the But it still helps for the Select Board <laughs> to understand it. So yeah, we do. We give them the stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we'll go to them. Uh, and that's in December as well. We we'll go to them, yeah. have, a, have a sit down run the numbers with them, explain what we're doing. Yeah. And then come March, we, uh, we go sit in front of the town and do it again, so. Some just won't. And obviously somebody would be here at town meeting. At town meeting. For yeah, we, they always are. Yeah. We, we could send somebody yeah. over for town meeting. Well, I think that suggests we um, ask for that money when we actually bought the truck, right? So we wouldn't. Yeah, so that's understanding. No, to talk to, if we're going to start with a capital plan. Oh, I understand. Plan. My yeah, I mean, you guys yeah. usually provide somebody to come and talk. So in the last couple of years, summary. yeah, last year, I know the last couple of years we haven't because we put the truck stuff right in the Right, year, it's been right in the budget. Yeah. Been, so. Right. Yep. It might be good just if you might yep. be asking sure. our questions, what to be there, it'd be good backup. Especially if, if any anything out, outsized, any kind of unusual increase. Right, which the capital equipment fund would, would be. be. Yeah. Right. So I'm glad you guys are thinking about it and working yeah. on it because it's, it's something you really need. Um, all right, well, thank you very much. And you'll send you us a time. new sheet, Chance? We'll, we'll, we'll send you a new Thanks sheet, and then uh, if you want thank to confirm it for the 10th, we'll be good to go. Okay, I'll let you know for sure yes, once I know what the schedule really looks like. Sure, that's fine. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. Good thank, thank you. you. Good night. See ya. Have a good night. It's okay. okay. Scott, is anybody else coming from HPC? Anything you want to update us on? What are you doing, um, Mr. Jury Member? I <laughs> no, it's a good thing. Jim Barnes in the corner. That's right, I forgot he was here. <laughs> that was quite the bit. To answer your question, yes. um, we'll be applying for another CLG grant this year to put adamant on the um, National Register. Mm -hmm. the, um, the total grant will be 13,334. The 60% federal share will be 8,000. The 40% town share will be 5,334. Um, and I think you'll remember that HBC has a really good record mm -hmm. of, of covering that match with volunteer hours. Um, so it's up to you. You could put um, 5,334 budget for match for the 2019 CLG grant. Let me get to... Or you could put a lower amount. Um, I just got to get to the right page. It's, it's averaged out over the last five years or so at about 2,000. 
but and this is the lowest amount, lowest total grant we've ever. Okay, so I'm going to say HPC um, CLG grant adamant. Right now, everything's out there on pie in the sky. Everybody's yeah. dream. Yeah. So. Um, and okay, so you're three, saying five thousand. Five thousand three thirty-four. Yeah. Okay. To completely cover. Yeah, the, I mean. The cash of the town match. I mean, you guys have gotten every grant you asked for for CLG. It's great. We're good. Yeah, you are good. <laughs> you are very good. All right. Anything else that you want us to know? Um, well, just that we decided at our last meeting to. Include adamant, uh, include a national register designation for adamant. Um, all the the other villages in town have all had a state designation of historic district. Adamant never did. Um, and it's really an interesting place. It is. And the hook is the co-op. The heart. I mean, it started the, you know, the co Washington Electric yeah. Co-op started there. The, yeah, yeah. The you know it was a huge thing in the whole co-op movement. Mm -hmm. um, the, the wild and woolly story of the granite quarries, the, yeah. you know, the, the oh, striking yeah. Italians from Barry, when they when they were on strike, they came to Adamant. Is that right? And they brought their entertainment with them. <laughs> that was a wild and woolly place. Yeah. And the Hall Road, the Sodom Pond Road, they built that back road, uh -huh. filled that with granite yep. in order to move the block. Yep. And I keep forgetting, now, and was the... Mm -hmm. Adamant Co-op, the first one in Vermont, or the first one in the United States? I know there's a story there. It's the, it's oldest, the, it's existing. the oldest existing one. The right oldest now. existing one. Yep. That's pretty, I mean, I think there's some really good... There's some great stuff there. Yeah, and then and, you've got the music school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this year we'll do something we hadn't done before, which is to, to do some, collect some oral history. So we'll do some of that with volunteers and some of that with our professional historians. So we'll hope to talk great. to uh, some of the some of the really oldsters in Adamant. Great. Uh, they're still with us and, and try to record what they remember. Yeah. Great. I didn't Sounds know like a, I'm sorry. The village um, was first referred to as Sodom. Yeah. I don't know oh, why. Before Adamant. Yeah. Oh, why. because, oh, you're just up, until until 19, up until 1903. 1903, really? Yeah. Wow. It's a, it was a hotbed of socialists. It was. Well, Let's then, hope it still is. Yes. But then wasn't there a, the, it was one of the, the, the was the minister's wife who said this is not okay and led, led the campaign to change change the, the name. name. Oh really? Yeah. 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 I can see why that might be <laughs> yeah. the re, the, the yeah. wife's yeah. wish, right? Yeah. Right. And job success. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Anyway, so it's, it's it deserves some more recognition. Yeah. And I think this will and and we got we'll have a really good write up in the third year or so. Nice. Yeah. Great. Great. <laughs> um, all right, next up, uh, let's do highway. I had done the, the changes that we talked about. Um, in the end, Sandra will, will be the main keeper of the spreadsheet, so anything that we do. Um, <clears throat> Last time we talked about um, that erosion stone, that was a, a new line item. We added um, urea to the fuel, gas, oil line. There it is. Oh, there it is. And I had a little urea. weird, had a little weird stuff with the formatting, but the, those columns aren't big enough now. But anyways, you can see where I made the changes that we talked about. And we talked about adding back in um, a supply line item for the office kind of area. And... MSGP, or whatever you call it. Miss, MRGP. Oh, Municipal Roads General Permit? Yeah. Yeah. So just a quick update. Um, They've changed the, the fee for our town. It's thirteen fifty now, not two thousand. Okay. Huh? 
Just our town or statewide? Well, no, they have like classifications of population versus mileage, and we fall oh. into the second category, which is at 1350. Okay. Oh, how nice. Uh, 5019. Put that to our fire truck. 550? 650? 650 bucks. Yeah, isn't it the bottom one? 504 one from the bottom. Yes, you're right. The case of oil filter. That makes more sense. I was happy, Denise, when we were going to dump drop you said thirteen fifty six thousand 6, down to 1330. That was the other one we were looking at. So I guess the other question. Let me just get this one down. 13. So 1350, yeah. Toby? Yes. Okay. And oh. what were you talking about? When I asked which line you you said mistakenly you said a number that was a six thousand dollar number and i thought that sounds pretty good oh the six thousand mm -hmm. down yeah, no, no, it's line 35 yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 it's down from two so yeah. it's 1350. all right all right i'm sorry um, toby go ahead the other thing is i guess the question was whether or not the salary line item that was in our proposed budget included me and it does okay that's what we weren't sure of no, so that's it, good it to know. does it's included Okay. And I guess there was a, the other question about was there any possibility of a merit raise in the next year, and Alfie and I discussed it, and we think probably one person would be we'd be asking for a merit raise of fifty cents. So, is that a percentage? Yeah. Yeah. He's not. He's not using any names. So that's. I'm okay. not. Yeah. But so you can look at that as a fifty cent over the a, a year period of time. As I think it's two thousand forty hours is. The standard, so that yeah. would be roughly a whatever it is, two thousand dollar additional cost. Okay, so one merit. If you want to okay. adjust that one. Yeah, item. that's good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't think there's any other thing that yeah. came up. Okay. So I just got to remember to have Sandra to update that line, and. Yeah, we're, we still don't have insurance figures yet, so Sandra's been working on that. So as soon as we know, we'll let you know. She'll fill it in. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it for right now. Good. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Toby. Thank you, Toby. Thank you. Oh, I, and we talked about um, a warned item for a used. Um, tractor for doing roadside mowing. Just, I don't know if Alfred updated you or not, but that's it's in the minutes. Yeah. Tractor and uh, sidearm. Mower. Right. Yes. While we're on highway, did you have a chance to check the that yet, Alfred? I haven't had a chance to check the tractor. Okay. First time. Do you got my email? I sent you that. I got the email. Yeah. Um, just for instance. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Good night, Riley. Good night. So I guess my question about that piece of equipment is, um, how are we running it? Who's going to operate it? Are we hiring a, a special person to come in and run it? So for the, I, the idea oh, was we could hire someone for summer help. Okay. Like, so that's not in the salary line. No, that's not in, no. 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 in the salary line. So. Right. Right. so if we hired a part-time, maybe you and Alfred can think about it. What? Or full-time, but in the summer. Right, full time. Yeah. Well, I don't even need so ten need weeks it. at forty hours. But something. you'd have to add you'd have to add that into your budget line. Right. Yeah. yeah. As well. Good point. So. Yeah. Um, so you might be able to get some. You know. I don't know how much you would think of for an hourly rate, but maybe you guys could <laughs> chat about it. And well, you're not going to just put anybody in that machine. I mean, that's. No, right. You know, but that's what I'm saying. You guys could talk about it and see what you might come up with for a, a guesstimate. Well, yeah. I mean, I. I would think twenty dollars an hour. At the, at the minimum, it's got right. the qualifications to run such a machine. And again, depending on how long, I think Doug Grub, I think is at least two weeks solid when he mows one mm -hmm. cut. We're now doing it twice, so that's a whole month of no, I was thinking an continually. individual. Right. You know, right. Yeah, we're talking about you know continually. It's all the guy does. John, what are you doing all summer? Working. Working. Well, wait, you're a selectman. You can just, you know, yeah, I know. You're, you're covered. You can just go out. You can just drive right? a tractor, right. John, and save us a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, we're looking for like. I'm not qualified. 
Part -time. That way I don't have to do it. <laughs> Part-time person. Now this lady's got deep farm roots. It's in her DNA. She's got little gears in her blood yeah, cells. That's so true. I learned to drive on a tractor. I learned to drive on a tractor. It's true. Yeah. So again, so I guess looking at <laughs> it's been a long time. that cost versus the one-time cost for Doug each year is something you ought to yeah, yeah, look at. Right. It's a different, totally different <coughs> program, right? Mm -hmm. right? So, and the other side benefit we discussed is. With those sidearm mowers, you can when you have that lower growth creeping over the roads, you can just mow that too. Mm -hmm. Doug doesn't do that, or I don't know if he's capable. No, he doesn't. But be careful about that, because if you have people that are sensitive about trees, you're going to. No, I know, them. I know. That, that's yeah, the great thing. Alfred responded. Respond. It's going to. <laughs> it's, I will refer all calls to John. No, no. So, so, so let me let me explain further. My clarification is, that's not part of the routine, but if you guys are doing a road project, rather than having guys doing this all day and this, you call the, the young fella or lady up, come on by, you know, Pekin Brook Road and doing a bridge project or whatever, the, wide, the ditch project, and they would hit that for you. you okay, know, I'm, just, I'm personally leery about that Can't because of the sensitivity this. about trees and, and people in this community and how they, they view the roadside. So Well, that's I, how I you guys want, do it. You cut it with pruners no, and chainsaws. But we What's cut it difference? back to the nub on the tree, and the tree is healthy instead of slashing half of a branch off. We, we do, right. well, we I'm do, thinking, fine, thinking, we do thinking, fine work as opposed I'm to... I'm not thinking work. of the maples. I'm thinking of the this brush in between. There's alders <coughs> and there's all that stuff. I'm not talking about you don't know, prune maple trees. But that. this is all just concept now. This right? is all concept. But if we, put, this is we ask, but if we ask the voters to spend the money right. on this, we need right. to have a plan for right. Right. the we ultimate use. Right. 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 I want to make sure we're serious about the plan before we ask the voters to right. get us a tool right. that doesn't necessarily meet what right. the voters want. Right. Well, so and depending on what Alfred discount. finds out for the cost of the equipment, what we come up with for what it would cost for 12 weeks of a part-time person for the summer, mm -hmm. it's all going to play into it. But yeah. I think we have to start looking at stuff well, like this. Well, I'm just putting that out for right. you guys to discuss because I don't think that's been discussed. Right. Now we're trying to be proactive. Right. Yeah. That's, that's my take on that. Yeah. We would, we would just, these are, these are the things that would go into a thoughtful policy on when you prune and when you mm -hmm. mow, and so I mean I think really I think the other thing that we should seriously think about is there's a piece of equipment just like that in East Montpelier right now. We should get a trial location and have them come and do what you're suggesting and have people look at it and say yeah. yes or no. That's a good idea. Yeah. If otherwise, I don't want to go to town meeting and push for sixty thousand dollars worth of equipment. And have everybody screen. The result is in your concept. Well, we know you're talking about the, the vertical mowing. The book, yeah, the vertical. I'm, I'm saying that would have the capability of doing that. Okay. This is meant to be a roadside mower. Okay. But those roadside mowers have capability to go down the interstate. You see the the uh, guys who mow. They they actually cut brush back as, as well as that. Certainly, I understand. And I'm not talking big maple trees. And I've seen mower. I've seen the town crew in East Montpelier butcher the roadside with that new mower. Oh, really? So mm -hmm. it yeah. requires a skilled, experienced operator. Right. Well, and I think we'd have to be clear with what we want done. Yep. But like I said, we have to start thinking yep. about some well, of this And stuff. again, I'm just pushing those things at right. you to make sure that... It gives you an it. option, and if you guys decide it doesn't make sense, and you don't use it. Mm -hmm. But it's primarily for roadside mowing. That's what it... Right. But right now we have a, you know, a rear side mount mower that is a little less, how should we say, out of control. Because if, if someone with an operator with that boom thing gets in the wrong place, it can really make a mess. And, and I've seen it in East Montpelier during their first year. On the, right on the low stuff? Oh, yeah. Horrible. They, Horrible mess. Would they get into the mud with it? Yeah, they dug up the side of the road and threw stones all over the place. And, you know, there's a, there's, there's a technique that yeah. it's over there on the end of a boom, and you need to sit yeah. here and tell it, yeah. don't go too low. And yeah. it, it so can, it, it, again, I'm just saying right. that maybe like we need to look at a rear side mower as opposed to a boom mower if that's what you want to do. If you want to control what we do, that's probably an easier solution than, than a boom. Well, mower. figure out what, what yeah. makes sense. Okay. You know. Yeah, we're just putting it out there that we're willing to support okay. something like that. Yeah. All right, we need to move on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Toby. Thank you, Toby. Thank you. Thanks, Toby. Thanks, Toby. All right. Oh.
Select board. So here's our first look. Katie, do you have it up on the screen? Or, out, or Cliff? Cliff. So here's your first look at um, some proposed numbers for um, the office and what is considered the select board budget. So we don't need to go into detail tonight um, about this, but if you could just start taking a look at it. Does anything jump out at anybody that you would like to discuss? Our legal fees have gone down. Um, so I don't know if we want to, you know, that's a significant line item. We could think about reducing that somewhat, um, but you never know what's gonna come up. So I would caution on that. Um, professional audit, we are over budget currently, but I think that the amount of a audit every year will stabilize now because we've got two good audits behind us. Sullivan and Powers are willing to continue. We've got their letter that we talked about. And it's, what's the annual price for that? Um, we're looking at like 14000 14 a year? Mm. So, d so is the professional audit line item different from like our old auditor? Yes. Two different things? Right. It is different. And that's why I had it changed. That's why I said. That's why I changed it. Had her, you know, changed it to professional auditor mm -hmm. audit, as opposed to auditor. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't have auditor anymore. No, we have a plan that we want to bring to the select board probably next meeting. Okay. That we'll talk about a little later. And you said legal fees. You would caution, but you mean going below the 15? Yeah, I, I would caution going any lower. Going any lower, but we'll see how things sugar out with everything else that's going on. Right. We have not been using a lot of our attorney's time. He's hiding over there in the corner. So he's not charging well, us not for this time. cheaper in the corner, you know. That's what I was going to say. You're not any cheaper over there, Jim. <laughs> we might as well get to look at your face. <laughs> He's cozy. Yeah, okay. um, and you know, if the listers are going to come to our meeting um, on the 12th, and we need to have a discussion. And I'm just trying to put some stuff out there so you can be thinking about it. They're not going to want to do this forever. The tasks of town listers is like exponentially grown mm -hmm. just it's like real, it's a real job just like the tasks of the treasurer have exponentially grown and the town clerk because there's so much more reporting requirements and they're just finding it really hard you they go to a ton of trainings yeah. and I did ask Jim Barlow who is still hiding yes um, <laughs> about an, a professional a professional assessor yeah, and because I asked him whether or not we would need to amend the charter to have a, an assessor and he says you don't need to amend the charter to move from elected listers to an appointed assessor apparently when they're appointed they're an assessor when they're elected they're a lister just to make people like me get confused mm -hmm. um, it just requires a vote at the annual town meeting and there's a process in, in statute which I haven't looked up but I don't, we, I don't know if we're going to need to do it this town meeting or next town meeting, but we're going to have to do it one of the next two years. And we're meeting with the listers on the 11th or on the 12th. 12th. Right. Well, if we're going to lose the listers this year, we need to do it this year. Right. Well, that's what we need to get delve in further with the listers next meeting okay. on the 12th. Oh, good. All right. Um, probably increase our IT budget. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it, it's just there's so much. There's For just, RV technologies or IT replacement? Um, we're having a, some looking at our options for IT support. Support. Yeah. Can we, should we be putting that out to bid when it gets shut? I'm sorry, Cliff. I walked on you. Uh, I was just going to say that also 
just to sensitize everyone, there is a greater, ever exponentially increasing concern with regards to um, security and ransomware, ransomware, um, spoofing, different spam. types of cyber attacks, um, and it's it's snowballing right and even faster than you could imagine it. So when we went to cloud-based storage, mm -hmm. and this is already years back when I worked in my last job as well, RB Tech convinced them to go cloud-based and us as well. Mm -hmm. My Even concern was that cloud-based storage posed an added risk. And then I was told no. And then the cloud-based storage places got started getting hit. And then, so I'm wondering, are we like shooting ourselves in the head or the foot by constantly taking the easy way out in the short term, like we don't buy a server, so we're storing it we on someone else's server. Well, we do have that's a server. What, but that's what cloud-based is. We're right. storing, we're backing up on what a remote server. It's At the end of the day, they're not gonna lose money. Mm -hmm. I, I understand there's efficiencies, but we're also relying on some stranger and some corporation to, to keep our security as foremost in their minds. And we keep seeing Facebook, you know, Google, every the highest of the highest end tech companies are failing at this miserably. Well, I, we, I don't know if, why this makes sense. Well, what we also to learn point. too is that this ransomware stuff, if towns are hit and people's personal information is compromised, this, is it the state? You remember? Is it the state can state charge us a fine? And it's not. Sure. And it's not cheap. Sure. Because Those we fines, haven't. If because if you can't show that you were doing do, performing due, due diligence, diligence. Yeah. The issue of um, the cloud-based, um, some of that is even beyond our control. Um, we use Nimric. We aren't ever going to have that all that information mm -hmm. on our server because we're using much. Nimric, mm -hmm. and so it's out there. Right. The even though we hear about these large firms being hacked and suffering breaches, they are infinitely more, have infinite more resources to deal with it than our little town. But they're bigger, to. they're, they they're go bigger to targets. targets. They, don't, they don't say, They're the hmm, bigger target. Right. What tiny little town uh, in the United States can we target? Let's look for the littlest town. Yeah, they're well, going to look for the biggest gonna, bank for their buck. They're going to send a bot out that's going to look yeah. for any server that is unprotected. It's vulnerable. Right. 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 I'm not suggesting And it not might be a larger town. It could be the Central Vermont Humane Society. That's what happened to them. And Wendell's Furniture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we're just putting it out here. We're, we're going to yeah. need more protection. More, with more protection comes more dollars. And every time... Arm the teachers. Right. <laughs> That's a oh. great idea. So we'll, we'll arm the office staff, is that the plan? Yeah, arm, we'll arm them with uh, laser right. computer deleters, okay. server deleters. Moat laser sharks mm -hmm. with the moat. So we're gonna, be, we're gonna work further on the figures, but if you guys could start looking at it and questions and ideas, things like that, that would be really helpful. Do we actually, we don't keep Personal, well, I guess personnel we do. That's probably the well, most. Well, there's well, you got all your taxpayers with all of their addresses and social security numbers mm -hmm. and yeah. all that stuff that's <coughs> out yeah. there. Yeah. If taxpayer social security. If you have the uh, income sensitivity, they have all oh, that stuff's here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have all the bank information <laughs> for people. You know, it's, it's the, if you think about it, there's tons the and tons for, yeah, right, okay, okay. of information, and we have. A responsibility that I just learned about last week that I didn't know that we could get charged some kind of fee if we aren't doing our due diligence yeah. on protecting the information. And I see Jim frowning. Is that He's scared like the rest of us? I haven't heard of this yet. So I'm okay. Interested in learning from it. Yeah. Well, and the people that are on the Sons Vermont ISP would probably be interested in that in, as well, right? The thing, other thing to understand about um, identity theft, everybody always thinks of the big pieces of data, the social security number, the date of birth. 
but the value of an ID on the dark web increases if you have more of that secondary data. If you know a you know mother's maiden name, how do you think you do so a lot well, of reading? So well. <laughs> <laughs> Working from home. Dark web. Um, the mother's maiden name, the the day you were married, the town you got married those, in. Those are those yeah. are password. Yeah. Your, those your, security your, questions. That's right. Your right. pet's name. Yeah. Think of all the questions, security questions that yeah. you set up and answer. Mm -hmm. Mother's so, maiden. Name. All right. those little Mother pieces of data mm -hmm. make an ID that's for sale on the dark web that much more valuable mm -hmm. if you can offer that full packet. So they're not looking at just. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So they're not just they're looking not at, at you know, those main numbers. They're looking for those little pieces of data that they can tap into. And it's amazing how much of it is just readily available publicly yeah. anyway. Yeah. They don't have to scary. do any hacking. Right. It's really scary. I don't know. I think you turn the switch off and stop using the computer for everything. And also yeah. not well, very scary. Those are the Terminator days, guys. Yeah. Uh, go uh, um, Battlestar Galactica and Commander Adama, nothing's connected. Yeah. No network computers on our system. <laughs> so anything else that, from our discussion when we met last week with the office staff that you can think of? I mean, I think the IT professional audit. Um, We're honing in on a phone system. Yes. And um, did you, did, some, you were, did the office staff get back to you? They did not get back to me, but they've been uh, a little busy. We've put some proposals in front of the uh, staff uh, with um, some multi-line systems that um, range in price anywhere from a thousand down to about seven hundred dollars, that would give them what they've been desperately asking for. Um, so do you know we what, may be able to do that sooner rather than later. Do you know what computer DRA means? That's not the name of that other vendor, is it? Is it a licensing fee? Oh, it might be, but it's $10,000, so I don't know. Anyways, we'll hone in on figures. I'm just pushing everybody so we get this done, this whole thing wrapped up in a timely manner because I just keep having flashbacks to last year when... Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, and I, yeah. I think I have PTSD from that. Is this in the folder? Is this in the folder? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's my fault because I got it to Katie late, so I didn't have a chance to send you the link, but I will. That's all right. And we're going to start filling in, I guess, fire department figures at some point here, too. Look at those little numbers to the far right, seven. There's eight. a page, the last page is a, those is a key. Footnotes. Yeah, they're kind of like footnotes. See, John? Okay. So it keys there. it back to that. And I haven't really. Um, had a chance to study it in full detail yet either because we just barely got it. So who came up with this? Or the initial one? Did Sandra give you this? Or you had this? Yes, Sandra put together this spreadsheet. We met with the office staff last Wednesday and went through a little bit of stuff just to start getting the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. um, and then the office staff is going to come to talk to the select board next meeting. Cliff, can you scroll mm -hmm. down to the where those the, oh, le there? the ledger is? Oh wait, it's a tab. No, it's oh, the it's budget. A tab. It's a separate tab, job. Ah. That's the explanation. Okay, I think it open us. Okay, that's what we that's right. what we need to understand. Yeah. Where is that hiding? Uh. Do you guys want to talk about this any further or would you like to I'd rather look at it? Okay. Sounds uh. good to me. Ooh. Any comments, questions from the audience? Good work. Brian. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the vote of confidence. Yeah. It's the most important job you have. It is the most important job we have. What the budget? Budget. Budget. Spending people's money. Mm hmm all right, so um, we have a draft letter 
um, in support of the appeal on Act 46. And David Kelly, who is an attorney, lives in Greensboro and has been working with the um, folks that are not supporting the merger. He and Charles Merriman Mer mm -hmm. um, are, are donating their time pro bono. There is a, a whole team of legal people that are helping mostly for pro bono. Um, and last meeting, you'll remember, we voted to join the lawsuit, but lawsuit is the incorrect word. It's to join the appeal. Um, so there's the letter, and I went in and um, made some su suggestions. I actually, I wrote the rewrote the letter, sent the email to all you guys. When? When? This afternoon. I didn't get it. No, who has got it, John? Kidding. What's here? Oh, it's here now? Yeah. You said it just didn't get it added to the folder, so we can add it to the folder, but I can open it. Okay. I just basically put the names in the blanks. That's what I did. Yeah, um, that's what I did. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you look at the one I did, it's basically all the same thing. I bet. Was that in the folder? No. Oh, okay. I didn't get it, so I didn't have a chance to send it to Katie. That's it. That's not it. I wonder if we look at the one I did, if it's pretty much the same. Oh, that's why there were two. I only opened one. I didn't there were like three in the folder that were the same. Yeah, I just opened one. I didn't. So there's two that you did the, the yeah, 341 this afternoon? One of them. One of them, the changes I made didn't take, so I had to do it over. Uh, so. No, so I guess that's not it. Must be the other one close, sorry. It's okay. There it is, right there. I see the yellow? Still black. No, no, no. Oh, this it's already filled in? If it's no, already. it's got the comments on the side. Oh, I oh. see. You, you know more about it. I just rewrote the, I got rid of all the blanks and stuff. <coughs> filled it so up. basically it was putting in from the Calis Select Board um, Let's see, I wrote it from Denise Wheeler, Chair, Cal Select Board, because you are signing as the chair, and I got rid of all the other stuff, school board, student, I got rid of all, well, pull up mine, Chris. Yeah, pull up. It's less pull up confusing. Clips. It's just, it becomes a regular letter. To, yeah, to I put it, I did it according to the way that we agreed with putting comments in, so. Um, Is it, Denise, you um, use the phrase letter of support. Did, did your changes make it a letter of support, or did it stay an actual letter of engagement? It's a letter of engagement. It's a yeah. letter of engagement. Okay. Right. It's hiring him. Yeah. Um, it's hiring them. Hiring yeah. the, them. The, the, group. the group. The legal, whatever they're team. calling it. Team. Is that what they're calling it? Yeah, themselves? I don't know. John, when you made your changes, it doesn't not look in it. like it came through, because Kidding. this is pointing back to the original, Hold on here. the what David the? sent. Denise. Yeah, if you have it handy, you can just send it to Cliff now. Yep. Just do a separate email. And attach oh, okay, it. let me find it here now. Recents. So, Alfred, did, while they're doing that, did you have anything else? No, nope, I'm just curious. Okay. We're not doing these policies tonight, right? No, because we got Jim and. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> we do need to get them done, though. Especially the credit card. Okay, so let me go back here. Compose a new one. Well, did the rest of you look at the letter to get the idea of what the letter is really about? Yeah. Any thoughts or concerns, questions, problems with it? Yeah, I mean, I we. The minutes from last time are clear that we agreed to join whatever it is we're joining. Right. This is, this is pretty straightforward. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's attached. I feel like we had the discussion last time. This is just like, okay, this is the letter. So do you want to just go forward and somebody make a motion to authorize me yeah. to sign this letter yeah. based on? Let's do that because we have other. We have other stuff we need to get, yes. get to. I make that, I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All right, further discussion? What was the motion? I'm sorry. To fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks, and I'll just sign it. <laughs> well, you'll see the blanks. They'll come out here. 
Just, it's just we are. It's, we are, it's an essence of time. Yeah, oh, okay. it's 8.30. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's basic. Right. It's, so Denise is the chair. She's signing for us. Uh, the chair of the select board. And it's the town of Callis engaging, not right. the school board. Just right. that clarification. So, and everybody said they generally looked at the mm -hmm. basic yeah. idea of the letter, so I think we're good. Do we okay. have a sense of what other towns are doing this? Are we, Berlin's doing it to, as a select board? Yes. Okay. Um, is Middlesex doing it? I think Middlesex is doing it as well. Irisburg did it. Um, I think Stowe's going to do it. Um, yeah, Stowe's going to do it. Probably Greensboro's going to do it. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, that's just what and I'm saying. And now they're talking the about going after Craftsbury right. and forcing them into a unthought about new district with this is unbelievable seat of your pants stuff here. Right. Forcing them into a district they would create from whole cloth with Hardwick. I'm not kidding. So anyways, so in the essence yeah. of time, Sharon made the motion, Cliff seconded it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? So if you get me the letter, I can print it off at home cool. and we'll sign it, it and mm -hmm. send it back to everybody. So and put it, send it to David Kelly. All right, moving along. Um, like to, we can do the, my update, which is very few and far between this meeting and minutes after we do executive session, if there's people are still awake. That's okay. a good um, All right. I would entertain a motion to go into executive session per, Katie, you've got it from the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I forgot to write it down for here. Oh, I know. I have it here. Per, for negotiating and securing a real estate purchase or lease option, 1DSA, 313A2. And I would suggest that we invite... Um, Scott Bassage and Greg Pelchuk to join us and our town attorney. Now? Today? Yeah, ask him. Fine with me. Anyone, and we should want to include Alfred? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Okay. 